What's up, everybody? I haven't been here in a while. Last week. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. What do you guys think? Oh, here we go. Let me get Michael in here. Hi. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey. Is it working? Because I'm like in the studio, so this is like different connection than normal. <gasps> Hi, Caroline. Oh, my God. How beautiful are you? <laughs> How beautiful are you? Oh, I got caught in the thunderstorm, so I'm a little bit... Oh, no. I was, like, riding my bike vigorously, and then, boof. Oh, and no. then my manager came by and asked me for Allen wrenches, so I've been, like, searching around for tools for him a little bit. But, we, you know, we're, we're neighborly. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, I'm glad you got there safely. Yeah. So. I got prepared for you to discuss things. So how is how is it how is it being back in the the studio after a while? You know, just like getting all set up, and you know, do you feel like you know a little bit of normalcy, or are you still a little stressed? Or <laughs> yeah, it, uh, you know, it's still this is not normal. It's still mm -hmm. so different, and I have so much cool. to clean. I have to kind of rearrange, and I'm gonna create maybe a photo area if possible. Yeah. But this is I have a, I feel like I need to write a love letter to my studio. You know you've been here. You know it's like the epitome of me. Yes, all the memories, all the amazing oh, all the work, all the the new ideas and all of our times there. Those were really fun. We have good times. Okay, let's do a little mini tour. Yes. This okay. is like <gasps> you know, because we like to eat. Yes. <laughs> But I love like the little the, the pictures and all of the, the little campaigns that you've had. Yes, we updated because I got all the stuff from like the storage. Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, I have it all. Might as well use it and make it nice. So you usually Absolutely. see this more like showroomy. Mm -hmm. So this used to be a workstation for one of my fabricators. No more. Not right now at least. We don't we can't Not be right in now, here. Yes. Anybody if they are working for me is working from home. Safer. Exactly. I also brought this to show you because we discussed, we chatted for a while before this. This is another. I love Mario Badesco. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Miniature beauty moment, but this, for this kind of time of year where you need a yeah. little. A little spritz. One of my coworkers for her, um, her party, her like her, I guess like her bridal favors. Yeah. Made, um, Mario Badescu um, rose spray, like the the rose uh, spray. Her whole thing is pink, so she only did pink. She only gave them pink things. So then she did the Mario Badescu, and it looked. I was like, oh, that looks really good. I haven't seen the. I feel like it always sells out. The rose one. It's the like rose super good. I have a miniature rose one, even smaller than that cucumber one. She's fancy. They Sephora, if they're not canceled, mm -hmm. has this. <laughs> Sorry. Where I'm like, can't keep up with the companies, but it's like, they're on the edge, and then they're like, boof. They have one, two yeah. ways, to and they choose well or not. We'll see which one they choose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they already are in a little bit of trouble because they're related to LVMH. Good point. Which has been having issues in terms of funding, but they kind of are a separate entity, so um, we'll see. Well, Alta's see goes on. coming on hot, you know what I mean? Alta's massive, I feel like. Especially in New York, it's growing a lot. Like they opened their their new store on the Upper East Side, and that has been huge. Upper East Side, really? Okay, that's over good by the Met. It was like on Eighty Sixth and Lexington. My old neighborhood, because I used to yes. live with the H and M, the new mm -hmm. Fairway. Blah, blah, blah. A million things went in there right after I left. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Doesn't it always? It's really cute. And then you go visit, and you're like, oh, this is new. <laughs> Why weren't you here when I was here? When your neighborhood is like just okay, and then all of a sudden you leave, you're like, no, it's like excellent now. It <laughs> went up like two levels. Yeah, it's like, oh, of course when I leave, this happens. <laughs> it's really weird. Well, they couldn't have done that then. I, it was, whatever, it's fine. Development is weird, and now who knows what's going to happen now because everything's changed. Things are rapidly changing, rapidly. Yeah. We're trying to keep Go up on. with them in a good way, but sustainable also. Yes, yes. That's a, I think that's the new. What a, can you explain your outfit right now? Because your hat is so. Thank cute. you, thank you. It's it goes, <laughs> just like my legs, they go all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, yeah, no, it's pretty long. It's pretty big. I love it. So one of my um, really good friends that I worked with at Bendel's, um, she wore it for an ad campaign when she, or like a, like a little photo shoot when she moved to London. Um, and I saw it and I was like, I'm obsessed with it. Where'd you get it? And she was like, oh, so-and-so. And I completely forgot the name. I just bought, it was like maybe like three or four years ago. And I'm just like obsessed with it. And it's just like, it's just like a full blown fitted. It has like the snapbacks in the back. I just thought it was so oh. fun. <laughs> Obviously, like, this is you. <laughs> and it was made in that studio. That was the last time I was in the studio. Yeah, totally. And I actually brought like, I was thinking about you. I found that, okay, Yum. so the pieces I was thinking about, I've been doing really neat. We need to like every week do a little thing like Jafar, but make it streetwear. <laughs> Yes. Right. Awesome. <laughs> but totally. Okay. But I, I think I should do this like something every week where I highlight the random pieces I find refined in the studio. Yes. Who the, this? Yeah, that this is cool. I've never seen that before. I know. Let's, let me just show you this before I show you this other big thing. Oh my god, that's so cool. Super cute, like simple. This is kind of a sample thing. Yeah. Didn't you use that? You use that for bracelets, no? Mm -hmm. It's very, yeah, for the cuff, mm -hmm. cuff, like the more fitted, not so movable. This is more kinetic. So yeah. Good, like hidden joints. And then all these, like, all of these tube chain uh, components and so mixed sterling silver tubing and a cool, like, handmade clasp as usual. But the clasp is really a focal point because it mimics the miniature tubing of the, the miniature, like, horizontal line of that this piece mm -hmm. um, little subtle things right no it's amazing yeah. oh and to finish off the outfit i'm wearing uh pyre moss oh of course thank you of course Be <laughs> I, this is beautiful thank you and it's all like black musicians like and they're like all over wow the back i was gonna say it's on the back too yeah mm -hmm. so really for nice this collection color. Yeah, no, I love the color. I love it's like almost like a reddish. Mm -hmm. It's just a really good pop. Mm -hmm. um, and it came in like a burgundy too. Yeah, with a little mm -hmm. gold. So he did um, the collaboration love with Johnny Nelson for this collection. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I was this is, to it's from that yeah. same one. Yeah. It was featured recently or today. I was looking on his Instagram. Mm -hmm. for some, he was in some magazine. Totally. Yeah, and talking it was some magazine. And then Pyre Moss just launched their Reebok mm -hmm. uh, collaboration with the Innocence Project. So it's so their it's really third drop of those sneakers. And as soon as they come out, they sell out. I think they came out today. Yeah, to this 3rd. morning. Yeah, they're probably July all gone. Gone. Even if I went just to like go look, it'd be. Anderson Converse. Did you ever try to buy those? You have, I have them, them, right? Yeah, I can never <laughs> buy them. I've tried They're them. hard. Sometimes fail, fail, fail. Well, now that that silhouette did so well, they, they Converse have, now has it as its own. Yeah, but it's still cool, but I prefer to have the JW Anderson one. But I like. I agree. Just, I know. If we're gonna do you it, know, because we're 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 snooty, you know. <laughs> I don't want to buy all the shoes. I want to buy like one nice shoe, or right. like a not one, multiple, but a multiple. couple. Nice shoes. Absolutely. Speaking of this necklace that we designed here, yes. literally. Mm -hmm. This is a fun because we can like play with all the materials now. I'm so we excited. We have access. To and I'm very excited. Yes. And more tools. Found, and... Oh, yeah. Oh, I found so many new gemstones. Look at this. That's so cool. What? I don't know where this even came from. It's like from. a crystal ball. That's like so amazing. I feel like you look into it, you could just see the entire future. Hopefully, it's a good 2021. <laughs> Please, okay. We, I bow my head in silence for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Twenty twenty. That's that's so awesome though. Like, where did you where did you find that? Is it just like a random find? Was it like dead stock? Was it? I think it's dead stock from my mm. one of my old assistants brought it over for me from Tori Birch, because she used to be pattern sample maker for Tori Birch. Nelly, She's been with me for many many years, oh, but wow. she. She would always bring me, she's just a lovely woman, but she had mm -hmm. some stuff. She genuinely loves making jewelry. And so right. to be, we, that's who I hire, right? We need to actually enjoy our jobs. This is not, we're not millionaires, but we enjoy it. 
Exactly. We, That's the more pretty, important part. Yeah, and we have a pretty chill work atmosphere. We're not, you know. No, absolutely. Like, yeah, I remember. I remember when I was um, when I was in college, we had a conference or like a like I guess like a talk with um, Joe Z from L. Oh yeah. Um, and he came in and he said he he like remembers working for like do you remember the brand XOXO? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. So he apparently like back in the day worked for them, and he was saying like there would be nights that I would come home at, you know, midnight one two three in the morning, and he was saying like I would go to bed and I was exhausted, but I was happy about what I was doing. I was excited about what I was doing. So it was fine to do that. Not that it means that you should be working till two, three in the morning, but like, right. right. But as long as like, you know, you're excited about what you're doing and you love what you're doing and you're passionate about it. I feel like it doesn't matter, you know, how much you put, how much work you put into it, as long as you love what you're doing and you're excited about it. I think that's what's most important. And I feel like, especially like in the corporate world, a lot of people lose that. Cause they're just like, I'm just here to do what I majored in in college or, you know, make money enough to like, so it's, it's great when you're able to do things that, you know, make you feel fulfilled and you're excited about it. So I think that's fantastic. Or you find a place that you love. It's really a special thing because you have to also take, a, be aware of finances and make sure you're profitable as a business, but also do the passion projects and have authenticity behind design because yeah. that, that's actually a business thing too, because that's a, it gives you a competitive edge. It, that's part of branding. I don't know. I feel so ambivalent about branding recently in many ways, but I do think it is really important to think about that and to yeah. approach, your, approach your your work and your collections with a critical eye. Absolutely. I think there's like there's like a really interesting balance and people are not able to do that. I feel like Pyre Moss is doing a great job. That Reebok collection is excellent. Mm-hmm. I've been coveting. So he, has like, <laughs> he has like his own separate, so he has Pyre Moss, but he also has a collaboration with Reebok where he also sells both on Essence, which is where I purchased this, um, who are allies of the of the cause. Yeah, so I'm I'm here yeah. for them. Um, yeah. the, so it's 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 fantastic. So it's a win-win, and he's working with with Reebok and he's working with his own. And he's doing drops and money goes to, I think it was the, you said it was the Innocence Project. I didn't read that far into it. I just saw the sneakers. This current, well, I was like following up, but this current one yeah. is Innocence Project. And also I follow Tracy Ellis Ross, who I love. Oh, and icon. And she got the sneakers and she was like showing them. She always puts out together super cute outfits and like photographs herself at home. She has a good time, that woman. She does. That's one woman I yeah. heavily, I, there's a lot of women I appreciate because I think all women are amazing. Um, however, with her, she just enjoys life. And I feel like yeah. that's what a lot of people miss. I mean, obviously, like, yes, she works and she she gets up at four in the morning and does her shooting for Blackish and all of that. And, you yeah. know, obviously, she came from a very successful family. So that, you know, that does help. Oh, but, correct. but she is just like full of life and excitement. She's just like a real good person to be like, sort of like a role model, especially like, when you see like, a successful black actress that she's on her own. She's a, she's a single woman. She's not relying on, you know, raising a family and this, that, and the third. She's like, I'm here for me. This is, I'm doing my happiness. And if that comes along, that comes along, but it's, it doesn't define her. It's, she's doing her own path. She's, you know, living her own life and her own truth and she's enjoying it. And that's really good to see because I feel like, there's always this pressure, especially with women, to be like, you need to be settled down, have kids, this, that, and the third. But she's just like, I'm having, a, I'm enjoying my life. I'm, you know, I'm working. I'm doing what makes me happy, and that's that's another mold that needs to be part of. Yes. The model of society. Yes, there's no, or more in there. There's exact. I think it's it's. I think our hopefully we'll see this more in the next couple of generations. Yeah. Especially women become maybe more the breadwinners in yeah. more relationships. It's not that necessarily even half and half where we, we're seeing more and more stay at home dads and different changing right. gen, which I'm here for. I'm definitely here for it. And I Same think, here. yeah, she's also super entrepreneurial. She has a whole hair care yes. line. Yes. That is crazy successful by the way. Yes. And she's going into like products too and new hair tools, styling tools. Yeah, they're like 
everything is beautiful. beautiful. What I love about her is that she did, she didn't just put her name on it and was just like, this is a Tracy Ellis Ross brand. She was studying this for 10 years, like doing okay. the research, getting, making sure the curl patterns were proper, making sure that the, the tools could be used for more than one pattern. And it was, I just, I love that. Also, did you see her, speaking of marketing, because I know that's going to be a huge thing we're discussing in ad campaigns. Do you see we're her- talk, um, talk about. Do you see about uh, her marketing for um, like the press, her press? She actually went into the shower. She, made, she had a shower like in the office made and all the press were around it. And she literally would put on, this is, these are the steps that I do. So she'll, she would put it on, she put it in her hair and she'd be like, okay, so then you hold it in you hold it in for five minutes and then you rinse it and then you add in the conditioner and then you add in this and then she like would dry it all out and she's like and then this is the step that you do after so it was like a full press release but she's actually doing the advertising by putting the stuff in her hair and it was <laughs> like, so first, junior no it's like real it's like mixing reality tv and all these like yeah. youtube kind of like the youtube model a little bit mm -hmm. which i love yeah she did that in her stories she does this in her stories a lot within instagram but i didn't know she actually had done this as a, a she, she did it in the pattern office they had a shower so i guess it's like their test shower where like they test all of the the stuff by by um i guess by curl pattern and she just did it and she did all like the treatment ones after and it was just so it was just so revolutionary and it was like such a cool way to actually do advertising because not only is it the person that's the face of it and the creator of it that's doing it through to their own hair. So that makes me trust it more. Totally. Authent but it's also a authentic. Truly yes, authentic. very authentic. She, you can tell she has a lot of, she believes in it. Yes. Makes, and that's, put her that's self -being. important. Yeah, yes. that doesn't happen. Like, well, okay. This is like a really good segue maybe into Kendall Jenner. I don't know. That was Hold weird. on, I need, I need a sip first. I need a sip first. I thought, uh, what's up, everybody? Thank you for being here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> we made it. This has um, been, I, like, this is the week that it's set in. We're yeah. here. Still doing here. this. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's, it's... Little Jenner. So, going, segueing into, like, finding different ways of advertising rather than just, like, the print ads, because... Vogue is kind of under hot water. Oh, Susie Mankus oh, left. You heard about that, right? You. Hey, Susie Mankus was a big deal. 30 years there, right? Three zero. People? No, really? she was She was 27 years at uh, the one before. She was at Vogue since like 2014, I want to say. But okay, she was so somewhere else prior in Britain. No, it was like Telegraph or something like oh, that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's escaping me for a second, yeah. I but she was there for like 27 years. Definitely considered an authority. Huge. To some degree. Absolutely. And she has that, the signature pompadour. Just like Anna has the bob, she has the pompadour. Lynn Yeager. I always think of her in Lynn Yeager, kind yes. of. The those same are like, era. Yes. Those are like, I feel like those are like the outer voices that should be heard a little bit more than, you know, Miss Anna. Anna's still there. Who's the Honestly, other dude down? You saw the the sustainability director also stepped down at Vogue. Oh like yes, name. yes, White I Mayer. forgot his name. Yes, me neither. I'm spacing on his name though. Yeah, he only lasted tw tw twelve months or something. <laughs> like he didn't last so long. There, he's like, listen, I gotta go. This is a sinking ship. So, being that the magazines were like the main way of advertising and you know that's i mean listen vogue is like 70 percent ads to like 20 percent like photographs and then like 10 percent content like let's be real here. yeah so you got all your advertising from from vogue especially the september issue oh so september issue is this thick now it used to be massive, a it's thick. a bible it's, a, it's literally merriam webster's dictionary yeah. at this point and it's just all ads and mm -hmm. to be honest, a lot of the ads aren't really that good. So no, no, and actually, what's some of the ads are so good you think they're editorials. That's there's like that's very true. Do you know where you're like Ugh. you'll go through? You're like, oh, this is great. Sometimes that happens. 
It's like, who shot this? And I'm like, oh, it's, it's Gucci's ad campaign. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're okay, sneaky right. like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And they, they, do it, they do it well in that sense. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, that's slowly dying. Not slowly. It's actually on the verge of death. But um, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. And it's very, um, we're, we're just trying to figure out a way to, I guess, like, advertise in a way that really gets customers. And it's a little bit more cutting edge. But at the same time, you know, with COVID, you can't do these massive ad campaigns with, like, 45 people and, like, 70 interns, like, <laughs> in a little cl enclosed space all together with hair and makeup like up on you yep you can't do that it is like intimate people are naked yes it's like you're dressing people you're do you know way too much things you shouldn't know about people absolutely you have like and then you have like the backup models you have like the background people you have like landscaping if it's depending on how it's how where you're what location you're doing it at it's a also, lot of people that are involved Models, the actual grooming of the models happens also there sometimes. Yes. Yes. It's like the styling. You have forty-five. You have like what? Two main stylists and then forty-five. You know. So there's a lot of people there. So just trying to figure out how to do ads that are not invasive to the model and like, you know, that are, totally. you know, practicing social distancing is it's going to be very interesting. So like we're starting to see that now. So like, for example, yeah. with Vogue, yeah, with images. So Vogue Runway, you know how they do all their, they have all everyone, every designer doing their, their pictures. So they had J.W. Anderson. J.W. Anderson just did all of his pieces on mannequins. And he took, like, I guess, like, house models' faces and had them painted and just propped them onto the, the mannequin. And it was pretty interesting. I need to see pictures of that because I'm immediately a yeah. little bit out. <laughs> It was okay. a little weird, but they're done in an art, artful way. It's not like just like their face. It's just like, it's okay. done like, it's like a painting and they posted yeah. it as like the face and then it's the outfit. So it's like, okay. I guess like he chose like who he was going to have be as the model and then just like painted them instead and just put them there, which super, was cool. Super interesting. Like the, the ways yeah. we're like recreating reality. Mm -hmm. Ish. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> okay, so that's why I'm like, okay, Final Fantasy, Louis Vuitton. Yes. So that was done maybe about three years ago? Two years oh, ago, three years ago? And it was very re revolutionary in the sense that, like, utilizing a famous video game character from a very famous franchise. Like, Final Destination is, like, has been around since, you know, but, since life I itself, I feel like. 90s or 80s, even? I would say 80s. Wow, we people to ask on that. <laughs> I don't know if we're the ones to ask on that. No. But I grew up with, yeah. like, my, my, like, my yeah. godbrother, my cousins. Like, they all played Final Fantasy yes. um, the since the beginning. So, like, yeah. nine, yes. So, like, 90s time. So, it I think it started in, like, the 80s, early 90s. Sailor Moon-ish time yes. to me. A little yes. bit, but a little bit later, a little bit adult, more adult. Yeah. Okay. No, absolutely. So, I mean, it's elevated into this like, uh, amazing graphic. So, Louis Vuitton, a couple years ago, did a collaboration with them um, and took one main character from it. Their name is escaping me. I should have done the research. But, yeah. Okay. I feel like, I feel like Larry's going to pop up and say, this is, the per this is the character's name, and I'm spacing on it right now. Oh, yeah. Larry? <laughs> Larry is our historic, like... No, he's a, and he's also a huge Final Fantasy fan. Like he loves like I think his favorite is like Final Fantasy thirteen or eleven. I can't remember. There's like a There's a certain specific one that he like loves. Okay. Um. So one of the characters from it, Lightning yep, is her Lightning. Oh, what a good so name! Her Lightning. So she has like this pink hair, and just like has this really amazing outfit that was designed by Nicola Gursky, and it was done in 3D imaging. So it was just so cool and so well done. And instead, she usually carries this massive sword. And instead of the yes. sword, it was like a Louis Vuitton like box clutch with a it handle. Was, and it looked great. The whole outfit exactly. was like gorgeous. You could tell the outfit was gorgeous and thought out and designed and cute. Her little dress is like sparkly. Yeah. And they understood. 
too. Yes. And I love that they made it look as though it was an actual piece of clothing. Like, it wasn't just like, it wasn't, it looked as though it would, it would naturally move that way if it were in person. Yes. And I feel like there was a lot of thought going into it. And that's what you want with a fashion show. That's why you would watch yeah. fashion. You want to see how things move. And mm -hmm. if you watch Project One Way at all, they always talk about the models moving. And things, yeah. you just start to see all the faults and construction yes. and drape whatever right they because are. because the main focus of the models the models weren't supposed to be supermodels or like well-known models like initially they were utilized as human hangers so it would be what they would look like it, this, this is very dark but this is the truth they mimic them, right yeah they're supposed to mimic what it would look like if it was hanging in a store but with movement yes yeah which is a little, a little grim but you know that's that's the truth yeah that's why they always are they look like kind of skeletal walking hangers yeah like an actual yeah like a bean pole that's changing though also which is absolutely nice. absolutely and i feel like that's definitely another route that people are doing in terms of advertising and in terms of growing their business is doing being size inclusive and you know putting models that are a bit curvier on the front on the front lines and really making sure that that market is covered whether it's authentic or not we're not entirely sure but I feel like it's good to have that evolution come into play and have, you know, women like Ashley Graham or, um, you know, my person back in the day was Takara from America's Next Top Model. Oh, she was oh. my favorite. Oh, so she was this beautiful that's... black model that had, she, she had like little short, she had short hair and she was a curvier girl. And that was the first time I've ever seen like someone considered a plus size model considered. in considered in, in fashion. So she was maybe like a size... 10 12 yeah. maybe yeah and she would kill it she was just gorgeous and stunning and i was like that's what we need more of because she looked she looked stunning and she was like on par with every everyone else there but she looked more relatable because you'd be like mm -hmm. i see there's a woman there that looks like that and yeah. when i see garments on her it's more relatable because it's like okay i can see myself in those outfits i think so too you know? actually that would actually fit on my body. Exactly. That's, that's what exactly. I want to see. I want to do video that actually shows people in 3D. I've been doing more video on my little mini self of right. taking even a piece like a, a headband and then just doing mm -hmm. 3D like this because it gives you a sense of scale based against my hand even is better than nothing. Right. And color, color. We were talking about this with Telfar actually because so far, we were looking at the new gold tote. We we're kind of both like, does it actually look yes. like that? Yeah, it's the lighting. And that video was so um, editorial marketing. It was unclear if that was the actual. I, I didn't look it's at the, the product. Photo. So, but having yeah, exactly. a little, and it, it had a bright gold. Bright, bright, shiny. New. I think it's on their website now, or it was on on Monday. It's on their website. It sold out. <laughs> But again, that's amazing marketing because they're putting it on Instagram. They're doing the really cool zoom in shots and like the swirls and all of that. And that's really, you know, speak, giving the story of the piece and giving the excitement of the piece that it's available. And then of course it sells out. So that's great advertising too. Super um, smart. Oh, didn't Kanye just do this? Did you watch, did you see Be of Business of Fashion this morning? They were saying Yeezy just put out some new videos that are or not kind of like 3D shots of shoes and stuff that are hmm. artistic mixed with the 3D experience. Oh, I didn't see it. I haven't really been paying attention to him, but that would be really interesting. Thank you. I also, I also am not like super, especially with the gap, this, and this whole week with- It's a touchy the, subject. It's an issue. <laughs> it's a very touchy subject. Well, cause this North seventh birthday was in terrible taste. I just, it was. <laughs> it was. It, it's, it was a little tone deaf. So I feel like, and again, that's other marketing because it's just like you're not understanding when to do things and when to post things on Instagram because when a celebrity posts something on Instagram, they're also advertising everything that they represent. So like Skims, Yeezy, whatever other project you're doing, if that image is seen as like you being like, oh, while you all are suffering as unemployed people, we're buying Frisian horses, even though you can't properly spell it. Actually, free 
free, free Jeans instead of F R I E S I A N. Or right? That's how you spell it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're perfect. Okay. Okay, so, good. I'm glad I spelled it because I didn't want to get called out for incorrectly spelling. <laughs> I know how to spell it. And I'm going to tell you I E. They put the E E. The whole thing was. They, so it was just like, that's tone deaf marketing. Yeah, yes. as they should. It's tone deaf. The Gap Yeezy thing has not gone over so well either, so. It sure hasn't. And I mean, we, you know, my partner and I, Larry, and um, our friend Christina, we're talking lengths about this and just saying, like, we were going back and forth, like, is he considered a, like, I was saying that I don't consider him a fashion icon in that sense because I feel like he um, has been sort of given clout and fed clout by, like, people that follow him or like fed this sort of ego boosting that like you are a fashion icon this and third. Yes, you can be an you can be appreciative of fashion and you know be a lover of fashion because prior to wearing you know mauve or millennial pink suits with capizio oh. shoes cuz let's be real here those Yeezys look like capizio shoes that I used to use when I was in dance class in the 90s. Thank so, you. Agree. Put, putting that all together it, it it's like, I don't consider you a fashion icon anymore. Would I consider you someone that's a lover of fashion and a fashion icon prior, where you were wearing the Goyard briefcase with a really nice, well done suit, or like, you know, the, the really cool outfit that was pieced together perfectly, or like him walking around with the oversized Rick Owens t shirt with like a bomb on blazer and like a vintage Hermes Birkin? Yes, I would consider you a fashion icon oh. then. Now? Yes. No. no. Yeah, well, because I do, because it's, is he actually a designer? Or is he just putting out something? I feel like when he puts something out, it actually feels more like a performance art piece than a, an actual fashion collection. And speaking of that, in, in, in talking about advertising, he did a campaign using the Claremont twins who are these Instagram people that, you know, have gotten famous for scamming and, you know, being twins and being good looking and having the same features as Kim and whatever. They used, she used, he used them as his campaign and did it in a way that was actually a complete carbon copy of another artist that he didn't give credit to. Oh, yes. That was not that long ago. No, that was like maybe like two years ago or a year and a half ago. For 24 months, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, in terms of advertising, you need to either have it be authentic or truly be out in the open saying, this is an inspiration from this artist. So that's the other issue is the copying of other brands or other artists. So like, I'm trying to think of another example of that. But I feel like that happens all the time where like, oh, some so-and-so did that like two years ago or so-and-so did that like seven years ago okay. and you're bringing to it now. So, or like this like artist I did that. That they're referencing. It's like within the last 10 years, with that, within the last 20 years, you're like, no, too, too soon. Yeah, yeah. A little too soon, and yeah, it's it's like doesn't feel fresh. For example, that brand Hanifa, who did the three D CAD, yes, movable fashion show with all of her new pieces. Her brand, her 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 pieces are so cool, and the way that she did the movements, it was on a real woman's body, and it was like you know a true like a true female figure. It wasn't like a stick model, and it was the movement was so beautiful. And somebody else tried to take credit and say that they were the ones that did it first. I saw that. And they weren't. And he was the one that did it first. Yeah, no, totally. So it was, it was, it's the thing so that people are trying to take credit for things that they didn't do. No, to that's a huge yeah. issue. And oh, it's love, because she's not, she's not nothing. Oh, you froze. Okay, there you go. Okay, hi. We're in my <laughs> studio, so we have kind of weird wife. Mm -hmm. But I was just saying, Hanifa, she's not nothing either. She definitely got written up by multiple uh, editorial press. And that's not the case with other people. So she actually had some press to back her up. Because a bunch of brands came yes. actually. Like, I look at Kai Collective a lot. Because I look at that. Yes. La Long Longe. I don't know if I'm saying she's Nigerian. She's the designer behind mm. Kai Collective. And I follow her. She's like the cutest yeah. thing ever. Um. And she just says, she talks about being an entrepreneur and a woman in Nigeria, yeah. UK. Interest, I love all that. Um, but she is friends with Hanifa. And she, when mm -hmm. she saw that, she was like, oh, hell no, that's not happening. Yeah, no, that's not happening. She, and she called it out. 
Oh, and like yeah. every day for weeks, like, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. like, you need to have like your network backing you up, unfortunately, mm -hmm. for this like credibility or else you get run over. It's Absolutely. Just, yeah. That's the problem. So going off of the Louis Vuitton ad of utilizing somebody from Final Fantasy, we're now seeing Burberry do it painful with a CGI, which is cool, which is great. However, you're utilizing, you could literally do, you're doing CGI, you could literally choose any character in the world, but you choose to do a CGI of Kendall Jenner. <sighs> so disappointing. <laughs> so, also, why? Could, why? Yeah, her you decided to do it with Kennel Club Jenner. She looks like, uh, <laughs> you could choose any model. You could choose any... Anybody. Character. Doesn't you could put SpongeBob <laughs> SquarePants, for God's sake. <laughs> Would be really interesting. Would you, would, would, it would be very interesting. But, but you I'm, choose to do it with talking about it. That's for sure, right? You know, it'd be everybody would tune into that. That would absolutely. be globally recognized. Absolutely, no. but no. So they did this sort of like it almost looks like a an eighties like pixelized video game. Not not really. It's it's like current, but it has like it almost looks like you could tell it's a video game because it's like um. Yeah the whole surface is like all a bunch of squares. Yeah, it looks like a, a game, like you're in, yeah. you're gonna run somewhere. And right. Things are like flipping and turning around and the music's very intense. And yeah. she has freckles and you're focused on them. And this- Which she doesn't have a person. Weird TV print over everything. You're like, TV, yep. I have to really be like, what, what is TV? What is that? But it's just like, I. <laughs> I know that that's like their, and this is this is as someone that used to work there. I, like, <laughs> I, know. I know that I know that they're trying to you know gauge that sort of customer because their customer is older. Their customer is older yeah. because you know they're known for the classic ready to wear and the trenches and the scarves and all of that, and that's where their money is. The only issue is is that when you're trying to gear towards younger, you need to do it in a way that's interesting. So like Louis Vuitton. Their customer used to be much older because they're because older people at the time were the only ones that had enough disposable income to afford mm -hmm. Louis, Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, the luggage, the ready to wear, whatever. But when you gear towards younger, younger, younger clientele, you have to do it in a way that is relatable to them. So bringing somebody, a character from Final Fantasy, that's not only innovative, but that's also very fun. So. Yeah. Even somebody that isn't a follower of Louis Vuitton would be like, that's very interesting. I like the way they did that. Yeah. It and incorporating cool characters. They, lurked, they looked at their customer that they wanted to go yeah. after and thought about their other interests and what would bring like a nostalgia feeling and right. a response to that customer and bring something beyond the clothes, beyond yes. the handbags, beyond. And they, they tapped into that in a really beautiful way that yeah. the Kendall Jenner missed the boat. It's just like, I feel like if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do real life person, great. Yeah, I understand she's a friend of the family. But when you're doing something that's CGI, that you literally could do anything, you could bring in a dire wolf from Game of Thrones. You could bring it like, you could bring in anything. Look at you, I love but that. But you choose that. I don't know. I don't know, I just thought, I, I just found it very weird. It didn't push the, what they were trying to do far enough. Their intention. Exactly thinking outside the box and they didn't go far enough yeah because they tried to still anchor it in this like older idea of using the celebrity like this yeah. or celebrity as the as the way but she's not real she is real i guess she, the, i know but i still think right. about that yeah and i'm still like <laughs> it's just like she's i don't think she's advertising gold frankly so i feel like if you're gonna do it with like i don't know because i feel like what what now especially with advertising is and especially with models for, for fashion, I feel like we're now more geared towards people that are almost people that we would consider misfits in the past. So like, for example, when Gucci did the, the makeup campaign, Ooh. they did, they had people with like teeth that were, you know, they weren't straight teeth. They were, you know, and they had an older, they had an older woman with like, you know, spots from tanning and, and wrinkles and things like that. And I, I thought that was so well done because it's just like, you know, that's more relatable. Like, okay, I can relate to this person that doesn't have the perfect teeth, the perfect hair, the perfect skin, the perfect this. That's relatable. I don't look like, I look, maybe you look like a bird and that's fine. But 
you you can go to like a Gucci ad. You can go to a you can go to whatever, <laughs> and you'll find someone that looks a lot like you or that that you can relate to. Whereas like you know we're, we're so used to seeing like you know the Giselles of the world, the Naomi Campbells of the world, the you know, and those are beautiful to see. But like when you see somebody that looks like you, that's a model, and you're saying I can relate to their features, and they wear that well, or like you know tall, lanky, you know not modelly but tall and lanky and yeah. awkward that's more of the way that people are going and more of the people, the more people are advertising that way instead of having like some celebrity. Yeah. And it's more inclusive too. people. Yeah. You're also, you're missing a whole customer base as like Tim Gunn talks about this and many yes. I listen to him. He's like, be more inclusive. You're yes. missing the boat yes. on a lot of people. Yes. I, and what are interested in fashion or don't know they're even interested in have disposable income or Everyone yes. for everybody, just like yes. art, everybody. And there's, but there's like the access to it is not always there in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. It's not inclusive. This is what our responsibility is in fashion to show that this is inclusive and to show different points and show different Absolutely. colors of skin, but also ages, sizes, gender. I think one of my favorite ad campaigns ever was a while back with Lomvin, and they did. Um, an ad campaign and it was a bunch, it was a bunch of different models um, of different ages. So there was a, a beautiful um, older black woman who was like a dancer and she had on this full beautiful outfit with like a nice fur boa and like this whole well done. And they were talking about like a young model, like a young, a young boy. And then like, there was another, there was a one famous model. I can't, she's, her name is basically me, but like the whole campaign was so beautifully shot and it was so much fun. And it was, you know, speaking about people that look different, that were, you know, of different ages that looked, that didn't have like that it look, but were still people. There were still people and it was still relatable. And it was like, I want to wear those because those are people that I can relate to. Whereas like looking at, you know, a seven foot tall and like six feet of that as the legs, I can't relate to that. I feel like Random Identities has done a good job of this. Yes. Thinking about yes. them, but did they put out something else? Or I just saw something about the designer. Mm -hmm. I, I just like reading them more about them because it's fascinating and they're killing it because they're yeah. speaking to this in many ways. And what I also love about um, Stefano Pilotti from Random Identities is that he actually posts. So when somebody like on Instagram posts his outfit, he posts reposts it and says thank you. So you're seeing a slew of people <laughs> of all different sizes, ages, and creeds wearing the pieces. And he wears them himself. I love that. No, totally. And it's also creating this like super strong community. I was thinking about this with your Spinelli mm -hmm. Colon story. Cause it yeah. just, did you bring it to show everybody? It hasn't even come yet. Oh, Bernie, okay. It takes like three weeks. Spinelli Colon makes beautiful rings for everybody just out there in the world. Cause I'm gonna post about, I'll post about all this later, but mm -hmm. they have a fundraiser for Marsha P. Uh, Johnson Foundation. Mm -hmm. The beautiful sterling silver multi, Mm -hmm. layered kind of stack ring they can wear over also as like a three layer ring i believe yes so it's a three layer um so cool. it's almost like it's kind of like similar to this but it would um totally so it's like a series and it has like silver like a little silver thing so the whole thing is sterling silver yeah but 50 percent of the proceeds goes to the marsha p johnson institute and it's just it's a beautiful ring and i would wear it every day there. and <laughs> i know she loves spinelli <laughs> A really cute. We all need to get that sterling ring before July 15th, I think. Yes. Yes. So before July 15th. And it's, it's $200. I mean, yes, that is not nothing, but it's not nothing, but amazing. But it, it made me feel good. Cause it was like, you know what? It's 50% of that a hundred dollars is going to a good cause. And the other hundred is going to make it. Yeah. So I think that's just, I think that's just such a great collaboration. And I feel like it's very, it doesn't seem forced. It doesn't seem, it just, this is what we're offering and this is a quick easy piece that I know we can sell a lot of mm -hmm. and it's an affordable well, price so more people can afford it rather than you know their, their 1400 to six thousand twelve thousand dollar rings it's a little bit more inclusive price point for a, and it's a beautiful piece you're, not, you're getting something of quality that's very much their signature they've really built up this I such a simple idea that's so beautifully done I mm -hmm. love I'm such a fan like that um, but I've also been, I just, I like think that way, right? Yeah. I do something in a different way, but I, I see their visual language. 
but I've been to their work, their design showroom in Los mm -hmm. Angeles downtown, and they have artisans working there. They ha it's made there. They yep. staff well. You can tell there's like yep. heart behind it, and like you had a wonderful customer service experience. Amazing, amazing. They were so, they were so. Um, alert and they as soon as I purchased it I received an email from somebody saying like hey like if you're interested um in knowing about like your proper size like please let us know if you have any issues like we'll send you a ring sizer they sent me a ring sizer and it was like the legitimate ones that like you get at a jewelry store yes. and then I sized it and I was like I was off by a quarter of a uh, uh, half and like a uh, half size or whatever and they were like okay so we'll update your order and make sure that you know this and then you can keep the the sizer in case you want to purchase anything in the future and I thought that was so genius. That's Wait, good marketing too. That's brilliant because they they have because of the way that the rings are made as interlocking. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of it's not just like a your typical ring sizer. You can't just go right. on your ring. You have to kind of give a little bit of half inch to a quarter inch extra mm -hmm. for the for all the connections. So right, that's why they built this. They don't want returns. They want to make no. sure it's done right the first time because they're the order special for you. Absolutely. And that's, that's what I loved about it. And that was such a great um, experience. Now, yeah. speaking of uh, philanthropic jewelry designer. Doing this. Yes. Look like a I know you have some pieces to show. Yes. Okay. Well, A, I'm going to show you. We are so behind because we have 15 minutes, but we're, <laughs> we're chatty Cathy's. But we are chatty Cathy's. We have a lot to talk about. We do because we love catching up. Um, <laughs> I made, this has been going really well. I made, these are going out tomorrow, probably. These are all the hot pink orders. The hot pink one was super popular. Oh, yeah. I launched kids. I want to ask a question while everybody's yeah. here. Okay, so I have, this is the new kid sizing. I got satin, like cute satin covered. So pretty. So like perfect for kids, right? Because they can, mm -hmm. they don't have, they can clutch it. And it's not going to mess up. Right. This is still fits adults though in many ways. It's not. Yeah. I feel like for somebody that has like more of a petite head or me, you know, yeah. yeah. I'm not super huge size head, but I don't no. think out of out of the range for adults because I'm doing some mom daughter versions. Yeah, They're matching. So I'm thinking this would be, I could do this for adults maybe. Okay, cool. I That's think so too. Tons of hot pink, and then these colors are going to launch. These are 100% proceeds to Crafting the Future, New York City Jewelry Weeks, Here We Are, Color of Change, and the Loveland Foundation. And it's Black Mental Health Month. Yeah. By the way. Oh. You, isn't that funny? I, Interesting. We just make up months for things, but okay. I that makes like, Listen, that's fine. I need, as sure. a Black person, I need a lot of mental health I, from all, we, of the, all of the months that have occurred right now. Oh, I, the, <laughs> Yeah, seriously. So, I'm here I, for that. Year round. That's why I'm like, it's weird that just one month. Anyway, it's just one month. It's just funny that we just, I don't want to make it too Hallmark. How's that? No, absolutely. Um, So I made blue. Okay. Orange. Love it. Golden rod. I feel very 90s. Baby pink. <gasps> lime green. Ooh. So cute. And those are the kid sizes or those are the adult yeah. sizes? And adults, and the adult ones are all, there's a couple adult ones left, but those are mostly gone too. Of course. I'm like, well, <laughs> I haven't done even the email marketing yet, but just on Instagram, I've been kind of chatting Fun. with people. So we're doing yeah. I'm on the side also to some galleries. So those are coming up. This just went, is going to Hong Kong tomorrow. So fun. I love the red. Always good luck. This is going somewhere in Missouri. Ooh. So Oh, little, little, this has been going really well. So this is for, this is what one I'm doing currently off the Flower Power Collection. And right. then working on our pieces. Yes. So I brought, <laughs> I brought the piece and I brought some stones and stuff to show you. Okay. And some hoops. And I was going to, we're decided to just, I brought also some new mask chains. I made a couple more of those. Um, but we're going to need to make our own mask chain, I think. Yes. In this collaboration, which yes. is. Super oh, awesome. It, so buried treasure. I think I need it. I'm going to start adding in a little bit more stones on this one. It needs a little bit more. Yeah. To, it needs some more grit. Yeah. So, you know, and then we're going to, I'm putting in the moss agate, the chips, mm -hmm. the asymmetrical on one side, which are 
I believe where I had this. Everything is a little bit weird right now because you're fine. You're okay. fine. We're settling back in. This is the first the first week. You, I gave you a mini tour in this while we were chatting, and the you can see it's very much a work in progress. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. That's fine. This is going to be kind of on one side like this, yeah. on the, and here's going to be the shipwreck mm -hmm. netted with the broke pearls, sandstone quartz, and then these kind of goldeny agates. Oh, so good. Uh as this, these are just, you can see them uh, again, refreshing people up. But this, I pretty. That. I love well, that so much. If we did, so if we do hoop earrings, I brought a couple, I just brought, sip, I brought humongous hoops, honestly, because I feel, why not? why not make some humongous cool hoops? We can make a small version too. Do yeah. the big piece first, like we're doing the big necklace first, then we're doing the mass chain based on that. Yes. The based on that. But with the hoop earrings, I thought big. This is one with stones, but if this could be the base. Yeah. And then we could have a chain dripping off of it with uh. miniature Baroque pearls and little uh, rutilated. I have rutilated quartz chips. So it's going to have that kind of shipwreck feeling again. So. Yes. All of it. Yes to all of it. Kind of, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Those so we can, it would be a little bit trying mm -hmm. to miniature replicate. Oh no, too much, too heavy. Yeah, too. <laughs> JK, that didn't happen. The whole thing was like. <laughs> it's like no, <laughs> but this could come in a small way off of here. That's yeah. Gosh darn it! And then they have chips. This is live, live, Diana. Yes, it is. Live from New York. <laughs> I he love. Was, she was wearing the new pieces based on the ones I did for you. I she, saw. She so, looks fabulous. I love it. I reposted it because it looks, <laughs> thank you so much. It looks beautiful. Yes. So I have some of these kind of chips. Ooh. I have so much stones. I love the mixture of it. Of It almost has like the whites and like the deep browns and then like mm -hmm. a little bit of like almost like a champagne. Mm -hmm. These are uh, called a smoky quartz, but I also have a rutilated, which the rutilated has some gold striations coming mm -hmm. through. Uh, I have a miniature library of stones, kind of. Come on, library. Like, you know, we're working on it. <laughs> it's, this is all ever-changing, and I'm not great. I'm the best at the organization. Um, but this is <laughs> going to happen with, I think we should do the smaller chain, though. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good. Here. The smaller chain is more this scale. Yes. This I think that would be a little bit lighter, and I feel like that would be a little bit, you know. Yeah. 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 So it could almost be like this. That'll be easier on the ear. Much oh, easier. So good. So I could, I could create a, I would crochet straight onto the hoop as like a base, and then I would incorporate the stones in Mm -hmm. dripping things similar to the shipwreck that we're doing in replicating the same idea but in miniature chain as well as miniature stones within the hoops and if we did that with the mass chain mm -hmm. would you like same would you do i mean i feel like that would be really cool like that size crochet as like the base Mm -hmm. Or like the the necklace in a sense, and then maybe the middle be like the neck size up of yeah. this ball chain. Well, it kind of here's a sample. Ooh, wait, what is th what is this? Here's a little sample. It's so good. This is a four point five millimeter chain, and then I hand crocheted one millimeter chain around. It's like chain ball chain on ball chain on ball chain. Very oh my god, I love that. But this what I thought would be really cute is that. Uh, kind of, I'll show you the mass chains I made. Yeah. Um, because they, <laughs> just working bee over here. Just as we were talking about, I made new ones. So pretty. Like you, I love the mixture. You know, like like little mixtures. We were like fun, yeah. uh, color blocking with pearls. I love that. So I put them on. Where's the mask? Oh, here's the mask. 
So the mask, I guess we have to explain what mask chains are because still a new thing. This is going to yes. be, this is going to be a thing. But like throughout the, throughout the week, I've been wearing my mask and going out and it's so irritating that like when I'm in a place where like I can't like, um, where I can't, where I can take off my mask, but I leave it up here because I don't want to hold it. This would be so much easier because then I don't have to hold it or touch it. It just comes off. Mm -hmm. And so this I, hang out here and then. Oh, ah, so perfect. Then you have perfect. this happening, right? Right. And then you get a nice accessory with it. So I think that's fantastic. <laughs> when you need it, like, you know, sometimes when you're out, you're walking, walk, walking, you go to the park and nobody's there. You're like, oh, okay. Right. You're like, okay, I can, I can breathe for a little bit. For like 10 minutes and then someone comes up because it's New York. <laughs> it's just too many the people. Truth. The truth. But this I thought was cute. So for the mask, yeah. pick this again for what we're chatting about. I mm -hmm. kind of thought. Ooh, yes. But then how would, would stones be incorporated in this? Or would this be, would I have more drippy things coming off of it? Not as, not as crazy as this, but with little bits and then stones mixed in. So we have the same shipwreck feeling. Mm. Or the, it's too heavy. Because... I feel like if we put too much into it, I feel like it'll it would be too heavy because I'm it's it's holding up a I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it'd be a little too heavy. I think so too. This is already has a weight to it. Yeah. It has a there's a weight which this is a sensitive part. Yes. Is this if you've been wearing the mask, you know. Yes, it's it hooks on uh, and sometimes it hurts like in like in the, the yeah. I guess like the bridge here or whatever. Rubs you, it rubs you raw. So I, I feel like weighting this a little bit to the back is nice because it takes some pressure off. It's, yes. So yes, I agree. I'm trying to play with if I can get that to work. Yeah. And I've, I've seen really cute masks where they do, they have the, they have this happening, mm -hmm. right? And then here they take something and it connects here and goes around higher, oh. up, and higher up around here. Uh huh. So it, it really takes the pressure off then, but then it's, it is definitely not cute. No, because the only way you could do, the only way you could do that would be like, if you did two hooks here and then you have to fit it. The problem is that you have to fit it around someone's proper head because someone's head yeah. may be different. Everyone's head is different. So really? like, if you did it, you could add like pearls or things like that that go up here and almost looks like a headdress. Or they could be like adjustable with multiple, like three sizing, like three buttons that you can. Oh, um, yeah, that could be a good idea. So we could do that. Or um, I do like the, I do like the, the, because I feel like it'll pull this way anyway. With two minutes to spare. <laughs> We're going to draw with the clock, draw against the clock. But I know what you're saying. So it would be. Yeah. Yeah. It would kind of come across like this you mean right yep. here and yep. there one two three connections one two something like right but that is yeah. that would be difficult i think the more like this which is the kind of like a sunglass chain type thing yeah. is a which little is bit very in right now we need those yeah more yeah. fashion easier to fit multiple people too that is very true and then it could become a necklace. It could be like the more production piece necklace. Exactly. So you, even when you're not using it for the mask, you can hook it back and then it's a regular necklace if you're going out. Yeah. When this is when this is all over, you know. Or if you're just in your house, you just want to wear a necklace. When you're on your cute Zoom calls. Yes. When you're cute Zoom meetings and whatever. Mm -hmm. We're still socializing. We're not not socializing. Absolutely. Remember that. Absolutely. Or if you have like, you know, family coming over and you want to, you know, look presentable and you have a nice little pearl necklace. This is like my very 90s version of a pearl necklace. I'm just gonna love that. This is me at 12, very happy. These are all, and this is also all of my friends growing up. They always had a necklace that was that short and then they had the little like string choker, oh. like the jelly choker. One it was that, one. it was one and then, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and right there, we have, oh, yes. it's, I have to say, thank you so, as usual, way too short. Where Wonderful catching up and chatting. Yeah. I'm going to post some articles kind of about the stuff we talked about. Can't wait. We're, it's always enlightening. Thank yeah. you so much, Michael. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yeah, always. Have always. a great one. Have a great one. You too, Bobby. You too.
Ish. <laughs> <laughs> with, with like, you know, introspection. Okay. 